What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Bigfoot Bass Guy TV. As y'all can tell from this front deck, we got a lot of rods on the deck. This video is Ledge Fishing 101. Let's go. Come here. Big. Look at that copperhead swimming through the water. Nope, no thank you. Don't think so. That sucker is as copper as a freaking copper pipe. Pretty dang good one. Three hundred DD. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. There you a good one on a ledge on a 300 DD, sixcentsfishing.com. Use that code Bigfoot and it'll save you some money when you go to purchase you some 300 DDs. That dude right there. Let's get another cast out. Another one. He ain't near as big, but found the line up now. Oh, good lord. Come here. That is just a little guy. He ain't got no business hitting that big old crankbait. Got it too. Another good little chunk. Big, but then again, it could 
B1 is just full. Yep, fooled me, spotted bass. Oh, God. Pretty little sucker. I just got done idling this ditch. Just kind of tell you all was going on. I got done idling this ditch. And I hit it with side imaging and there's some fish in it. So we gonna see if they want to play a little bit. Boy, howdy, come back here. That was far from where I was aiming. baby bass. Get us out a mid-range crankbait. Try to tick the top of that grass.
being real quiet. We got one on the mid-range crankbait. A little good one. Shaky head just don't come out of that grass like that Texas rig does. Like that ribbon tail. be a big there we go bingo bluegill beds that's what I'm talking about that is a fat 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 fish too he ain't very big but he's fat that's what I'm talking about All right, y'all, real quick. This cold front has shut these fish completely down. Bite just keeps getting slower and slower. So that being said, we're gonna take this opportunity to show y'all what I'm looking for. First rattle out of the gate, when these fish first pull off from spawning and they it's that first wave that pushes out offshore. Look for the bluegill beds. Those bluegill terrorize them largemouth when they're on beds. And so now it's the largemouth's turn. Them bass get out there and they just terrorize them. They feed up. It's a high protein meal for them and they can eat one and done. A seven plus pound fish is not gonna chase around shad all day, every day. They want a one and done meal. So I'm gonna turn my side imaging on only to show y'all a larger image of what I'm looking for. So we're gonna go on this point right here. And this is a main spawning bay right behind me. They spawn all down these banks that you see right back here. So this point, this is a long main lake point. This point will show up on everybody's graft. Look for them long points at the mouth of spawning pockets. And I'm gonna show y'all what we're looking for. So as you see, we're just going through here. I'm looking right at 80 foot to the right and 80 foot to the left. And if you, if you know the point, you don't even have to turn on your freaking mapping. You can just go down the point like I'm doing right here. We'll show you all these, these little bluegill beds. This is the ticket this time of year. These look like donuts it's because that those are tires. Here you go, right here. See these little circles up here? That's what you look for. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna zoom into it. That's what we're looking for right here. If you'll look, there's actually a freaking bluegill. That's either a big bluegill or that's a largemouth hanging out in that right there in that bed. So that's what we're looking for. You always wanna hit them with your side imaging. You never want to go right over the top of them. One, you can't see the bluegill beds that way, but two, you'll spook them off. So these are about 30 foot to my right. This is another prime example of what we're looking for. I'm gonna zoom in if it'll let me. Here we go. See, this is what we're looking for right here. This is a perfect example of what these fish key on this time of year. The other thing, Humminbird 360. I'm a Lawrence guy. Humminbird 360 comes in handy because you can sit spot locked and you can see these all around your boat. But I have a Garmin. Live scope. Garmin's got this mode called freaking perspective. You might have heard of it. If you haven't, it's like live 360. I can pan it wherever I want and I see a side, I see a ugh, tongue tied. I see a side photo 
live. So I'm getting a Humminbird 360, but it's live. So that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna go back over them one more time and see if we can get an even better picture than we did, but that picture was pretty good. These Lorances, I've got these live units dialed in. So I'm gonna go back over these one more time and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk baits. I've only got like three that I throw when they first move offshore. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. So I'm gonna show you all these one more time. And after that, we'll sit down and talk baits and how I like to target them when they first move offshore. Again, right, and here's the deal. It's only 10 foot, it's nine foot right here. Eight, six, nine foot. I think I came too high on the point, but we'll still, we should still see a set of them. Yep, right there. That's what you look for. That's the bluegill beds that you wanna find right there. That is a bass buffet is what I've always called them. It's literally what it is, it's a bass buffet. So, all right y'all, that being said, we're gonna sit down and, and let's discuss baits that I choose to use for fishing these little bitty isolated bluegill beds. So real quick, let's talk the choices of baits that you want to choose or the ones that the ones that I choose to throw on these certain situations. My first one, because I don't want to go in there right off the bat making a lot of noise. I want the most starting off a subtle, subtle, subtle presentation. So that's going to be these two. A magnum shaky head. This is just a big shaky head worm on like a three eighths ounce head because you're not fishing real deep. You're fishing anywhere here, anywhere from eight to 12 foot of water. So I throw the lighter shaky head, but a big worm on it. There's that, I throw this, the rods, seven, this is seven two medium heavy, moderate fast, 17 pound line, seven five to one reel. My other option, if I want to make a little bit of noise, but it's still subtle, is a big ribbon tail worm. This is a five aught, six cents jugular hook, a three eighths ounce, six cents weight, a six cents little, little bobber stopper is what I call them, and a bead, that little bitty glass bead. I'm gonna, you do this up here to my mic. I don't know how well y'all can hear that. It makes just a little, little subtle tick when you're just sitting there shaking it. Sometimes this gets the job done. We caught two on this today doing this same situation. Another great option. When they won't bite the worms, because you this is a typical offshore deal. You have to rotate through baits. It's a soft bait, a hard bait, something quiet, something loud. You, you have to do a rotation. My third choice is going to be a six cents finesse jig. This is a seven sixteenths, might be a five sixteenths. It's one of them, I believe this, this one actually is a five sixteenths. With just a little, little bitty subtle soft plastic on it. You can choose whatever you like. I throw a color that resembles a actual perch. So I throw the orange, brown, a little bit of purple in it, and I dip my tails solid orange. It's another great option. Now, when they won't bite that, when they just, it's a reaction bite, then those bass get to where they're chasing all those bluegill all around those beds down there. A six cents, 300 DD. Leave it to me to get it hung up. There we go, 300 DD. Great mid-range diving hard bait. Color, I throw something bright, because here's the deal with it. You're not creeping it over rocks like on a point. You're not easing it through the brush pile. There's nothing near these freaking bluegill beds but the bluegill bed. There's no grass. There's no stumps near them usually. They want to spawn in the wide open where they have sunlight on their bed. So you're burning this thing. This is on a 6 8 to 1 lose, 17 pound line, a 6 cents luck, 7 11, medium heavy moderate and I'm throwing it. I'm staying 80 feet from these beds. I'm throwing it out there past 100 foot and I'm burning it as fast as I can reel it. It's a pure reaction bite. But real quick, I didn't cover the rods. 
uh, let's start with the jig. So on my jig, six cents, seven seven heavy, big old line, seven five to one reel. That's my choice on that. The big ribbon tail, six cents, seven four heavy, moderate, seven five to one loose, line of your choice. This is 17 pound. And also, while we're on the subject, if y'all go to Six Cents Fishing, anything on the website. I guess Fido doesn't realize we're trying to make a YouTube video over here. Anyway, hopefully y'all can hear me over the dog over there. If y'all go to Six Cents Fishing, anything on the website, use the code Bigfoot, save you 10% on your order. I would greatly appreciate it. And it saves y'all some money, helps me out a ton. It's a win-win situation. And how can you not like a win-win situation? But I think that's gonna wrap up this video. Y'all seen earlier in the video, we fished a main lake point, caught some on the 300 DD, fished a, another hump, had a little, little bit of bluegill beds on it, and some tires near them. Caught them on the, on the 10 inch worm and missed several on the shaky head and on the jig but i hope y'all liked this video it was kind of a spare the moment video so i hope y'all liked it i hope i did good in it if not y'all leave me a comment what y'all want to see next on the offshore fishing deal but real quick last thing that i'm going to add to this video don't overthink offshore fishing if you know fish spawn in a major creek or if it's a creek you go catch them on a wacky worm all through april and all of a sudden you go in there and they're not biting no more, they've done pulled out. Go to that first point, the first secondary. When they stop biting there, go to the next one until you work your way out to the main lake. Y'all, it's literally that easy. It's not hard. It's easy now because everybody has the high dollar electronics. Everybody has 360, live scope, side imaging. Offshore fishing is easier than shallow water fishing because we have the technology to physically see the fish, find them, getting them to bite's the hard part, finding them's the easy part. So, hope y'all like the video. As always, please leave me a like, a comment. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a ton. And if you do, turn on the notification bell so you get notified for every video drop. I'll link everything in, I'll link everything here down below from the rods to every discount code all that hope y'all liked it i had fun filming it i'm about to go get off the water because it's uh getting cold and i need another hoodie so anyway until next time i'm john bowling and we'll see you right here next time on bigfoot bass guide tv peace